Hey, what's up? Thanks for joining. We're going to be looking at an awesome game from chess history. With the white pieces, the Russian Grandmaster FM Keller. Now, Keller was a very strong Grandmaster and he actually shares a very impressive record. He played against and defeated eight Grandmasters. Not one, not two, not three, according to LeBron James, but eight. Mm. Eight Grandmasters. He was uh, at least a two time Russian champion. Well, at, at the time, Soviet champion. And he had a plus score against four world champions. Evan Keller is one of the strongest players in history that you might not know about. That's a fact. So he's on the left, smoking a cigarette. On the right, we have Lajos Portis, who, as well, is a very. He's a legend. Still alive, still playing. Um, Hungarian Grandmaster. And uh, if it weren't for Peter Ligo, he would be probably the strongest Hungarian ever. But I would put him uh, top three, top four to be safe. Uh, I, I think we have to put him ahead of Judith Polgar, but uh, he's, he was immensely strong. And this game was played in Moscow in 1967. So at the time, Keller was uh, 42 years old. 42, which is the uh, uh, answer to everything, and Lias Portis was 30 at the time. Let's just move on to the game, enough rambling. Gallery had white, he opened with e4. Apparently, best by test was, uh, you know, according to some uh, some patcher from the, uh, the States, Robert or something, can't remember his name. Knight f3, knight to c6, and we have the real Lopez. The most standard of standard openings. The Spanish a6, bishop to a4, knight to f6, and this is just you know the complete main line. This is like the main line of chess castles. Bishop e7, rookie one, b5, and we've seen this countless times. Bishop e3. Now uh Portis played d6. The other option, if we switch the board theme to, uh, what should we see to? This one, yes. If uh, castles, which he didn't do, then after c3, black can play the martial attack, which for uh, for a while was considered pretty dangerous for white to face, and so many players found ways to avoid it. Today, it's more of a drawing weapon. But in the game, Portis didn't really, uh, you know, Give white a decision, he played d6, so he's not playing the martial attack. Uh, Keller played c3, castles, and after castles, we want to prevent bishop to g4, so h3 by Keller to prevent bishop coming to g4. Now, Portis played h6, and that's not the most common move. Uh, the most common move is uh, knight to a5, which is the Chigorin. You can also play moves like uh, bishop b7 or, or even knight b8. Uh, most likely in both cases going for the briar, which is another variation, but h6 by uh, Portis. So this is in 1967. The theory wasn't you know, as established as it is today, but nothing wrong with the move. We have d4 by white. I mean, he has been setting up for this, c3 and d4, very logical. Rookie 8 by black, uh, pre preparing to uh, put the bishop on uh, f8, and once you put it on f8, you add protection to the e5 pawn, and also in some cases the bishop wants to come to g7. Knight b to d2, bishop f8, and this makes sense, you want to fortify e5, but you also want to play g6 and bishop g7. We have knight, F1, uh, knight to f1 by white. And this is a very standard maneuver by white. There's a knight to d2, and the knight to jump to f1 and g3. And from g3, it will have more influence on the king side. It can jump to the juicy uh, f5 outpost, or in some cases, come to h5, as we like to see in the game. So, bishop to b7. Uh, the knight continues its journey, knight to g3. And. Well, we, 
Actually, there have been quite a number of games from this position. The most common move is knight a5. g6 is a possibility, but uh, Portis plays queen d7. And already this is um, sort of setting up for failure. I mean, it's a logical move in a way. You're connecting the rooks. Um, but uh, as we'll see, white took on e5, and it's, it's a very tricky. After uh, pawn takes, we see white's idea. He wants to take advantage of the queen on d7. It's only defended by the knight on d7, so can we somehow undermine the knight? How can we undermine the knight? Can you find uh, Keller's next move? Played knight to h5. And this is a very tricky move. Now, in the game we had queen e7, but let's look at the alternatives. Queen takes d1, extinction of queens. Then we flick in the so called Schwischenzug, uh, your free German lesson, Schwischenzug. Knight to f6, it's check, and because it's check, we can flick it in and then take on d1. And this has, has uh, resulted in a double pawn for black. And because of this, white will uh, have a structural advantage, which is not much, but for grandmasters, this is, this is something that you can uh, build up on. So Portis didn't fancy this. Also, of course, if you take on h5, your queen is hanging. So queen e7 was what Portis went for. After that, yeah, knight h5, queen to e7. But this allows white to bring more pieces to the attack. Knight to h4. And look at these knights. Quite pretty. This knight is coming to f5. And black elected to uh, trade some pieces with knight takes h5. Queen takes h5. But here, after only 70 moves, in a game between world class legendary grandmasters, black goes wrong. And he blunders the game. He played knight to a5. Now, this doesn't look like a blunder. I mean, it's hitting the bishop, this is a dangerous bishop, you know, hitting f7. And in most lines, knight a5, even though we say knight on the rim is dim, in most lines, knight on a5 is, is quite okay. But here, it was better to, after queen to, uh, takes h5, to play something like knight to d8. This uh, shores up the f7 point, and the knight is ready to maybe come to e6 and block some uh, diagonals. However, as we said, knight a5 was played in the game, and this leads to a quick defeat. Now, can you find the brilliant move, the very strong move that uh, Keller found in this position? Take your time. If you've seen some of the Alpha Zero games, you might be onto something. What did White play? If he paused the video and came back, I will now reveal it. White played. Bishop to g5. Very strong move. First thing to notice is, of course, we attack the queen. Second thing to notice is if queen takes, and let's turn on the variation color. If queen takes, it's mate in two. We take on f7, it's check. No matter where the king moves, it's queen to g8. Knight is covering g6. No escape for the king. Okay, how about pawn takes g5? Looks good, but knight g6 takes advantage of this pin. The pawn can't capture the knight because of the pin. And the queen is simply coming to h8 on the next move. And you can't do anything about it, it's going to be checkmate. So this explains why after we sit to g5. We had queen to d7. So the, the queen absolutely has to keep an eye on the classically vulnerable f7 point. Otherwise, queen takes f7, and as we saw, mate. So queen d7, but rook to d1. The last piece into the attack, and hitting the queen. The queen has to keep an eye on f7, so our hand is forced. We have to play piece of d6, blocking the rook. Okay, but now, another powerful move by Keller. He played bishop takes h6. And this is very strong, because you're also introducing ideas like queen g5, and you can't protect uh, on g7. 
and actually black is just lost now. Portage took an h6, but once again, the powerful bishop luring on b3. Black tried to get rid of it with uh, knight to a5, but it was too late. And we can play queen to d6, taking advantage of the pin. Pawn can't capture the queen. Uh, Portage went to f8. Going to h8 is not going to help. We take on h6 and play knight g6. And the queen is simply giving mate on h8. Nothing will be done. So Portis tried to play king to f8, but too little, too late. Queen f6, and as you can see, the threat is knight to d6. So if you play a black move like uh, knight to takes b3, let's get the variation color knight takes b3. We have knight g6, king g8, and queen h8. Checkmate, check Slovakia. Thank you very much. No soup for you. So that's the threat. And yeah, Gal uh, Portis didn't find the solution. He played King G8, but now, well, plenty of choices. We Knight F5 is fine. It's actually the best move. But Galler played Rook E3. This coming to this Rook is coming to G3, which will end the game. And Portis didn't want to see anymore, and he resigned. So a very nice game. Uh, I'll keep coming at you with games like these. Uh, if you like it, please leave a thumbs up, or uh, if you already haven't, subscribe. But for now, I'm signing out. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.